Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video isn't really too much of a happy one. Um, I wanted to share with you guys Lily's story. And Lily is the second rabbit that I had who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. So I had brought Benny home in July of last year. Now around November, I decided that I wanted to have a second rabbit as a companion for him. I found another bunny online. She was actually at a breeder and she was a mom bunny that had been bred a few times and she was being retired. And about 10 minutes from the house, I got an email that the bunny that I was going to look at had been adopted. So I knew that this breeder had babies. I also knew that she had a second bunny that was up for adoption that I had seen online, but I wasn't really interested. She was a fuzzy lop so I wasn't really ready for the commitment of grooming her. I wasn't sure how I felt about her having that long hair. Um, but we decided to keep going anyway and look at the babies um, and just see what she had to offer. And I asked her about this other bunny that she had up for adoption. She was seven months old and the breeder had wanted to keep her to breed her as a mother, um, but she just never grew to be big enough, so she had decided to put her up for adoption. So I asked if I could meet this bunny and she took her out and I held her and it was just love at first sight. I wanted this little bunny and um, there was no denying that this bunny was for me. So I decided to bring her home. So the breeder had named this bunny Ashley and I decided to rename her Lily. Um, I named her Lily after Walt Disney's wife Lillian because I'm a huge Disney fan. Um, and Lily was kind of the perfect name for this bunny. She was tiny and delicate and so sweet and she was just a little flower. So her name became Lily. So a couple days after Lily came home, I started trying to bond her with Benny. At this point, she had started to become really comfortable with me. She was eating really well. She was very happy. She was running all around the room. Um, and when I introduced her and Benny, um, they connected pretty fast. <music> Benny was really in love with Lily, and he bonded very quickly. Within a couple sessions, he was grooming her and flopping, and um, it just seemed to be going really perfectly. Lily took a little bit longer to warm up than Benny did, um, but eventually she loved him too, and they were playing and laying together. Lily had really warmed up to me. She was letting me groom her. Um, I would pet her and play with her and pick her up. <clears throat> she did not mind being cuddled. She actually loved it. <laughs> to bond with my parents. She was eating food from my mom's hand. She was licking my dad's nose. She just really quickly became part of the family and we all were in love with her. So after I had Lily for, um, I believe it was 13 days, um, I had gotten her on a Saturday and this was two Fridays late. I came into her room and normally when I came in she would perk up and she would run to the cage or to the door of the cage and um, she'd get ready to eat her breakfast. And when I walked in, she was laying on the bottom of her cage and I could tell something wasn't right. And I went up to her and I, I rubbed her nose through the cage and she didn't move. I picked her up and her whole body was just limp. And, um, but I saw that she was breathing and I, I put her on her back in my legs like I did when I would groom her and, and her head just fell to the side. She was completely limp. Um, so obviously something was wrong and I, I just started crying and freaking out. So I very gently put her back in her cage and as I did, her body just was limp. Um, she did, she tried to move forward, pull herself forward and, um, 
it, it appeared as if only one side of her body was working, like she was paralyzed. So I called my mom, she rushed home from work, we got her in the car. About 15 minutes into our drive, Lily started to seize. And I didn't think she was going to make it to the vet. Um, about five minutes later, she seized for the second time, and her body just contorted and flipped over on itself. And I thought that I had lost her at that point. When we got to the vet, she was still alive. And they took her immediately down into the exam room. And my mom and I just sat in the waiting room and, and cried and we were terrified. So after about 10 minutes, the vet tech came up and told us that she was on IV fluids and she was coherent and she was up on her feet. Um, she had a very low temperature and she had very low blood sugar. The vet came up and told us that, um, that Lily was okay and um, they wanted to keep her overnight for observation. And they had her on some antibiotics, some IV fluids, and that essentially there was nothing to worry about. They didn't exactly know the cause of what happened, but apparently this was something that could happen to pets, and essentially it was a one-time thing that I shouldn't really be concerned. Before we left, they did let us go down and see her, and she was coherent, and she was up on her feet, and when I called her name, she came to me, and I felt very confident that she was going to be okay. Right before the vet office closed, they called me and they said that she was doing great. She was eating, they had taken her off the fluids, her levels were returning to normal, and she was okay. The next morning, I woke up to a voicemail. I had woken up around 8 o'clock, and I had a voicemail from my vet. And um, she said, I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but Lily did not make it through the night. She said something else after that, I didn't hear it, I just started crying. There's no words for how horrible that feeling was. Um, so after my parents had calmed down a little, they called the vet for me. I was in no state to be able to talk to anyone or ask any questions, so they called the vet. The vet said that they really didn't know what happened and that they would perform an autopsy for me free of charge and I really don't remember the rest of that day. It was kind of a blur. It was awful. So later that day the vet called and um, said she didn't have an official autopsy report but all she could tell me right now was that Lily um, had very little fat in her body and especially around her heart which meant that her body was not processing food the way it should have been and her body was surviving off her fat tissue in her body, which obviously is a big deal. And the vet wanted to know why this was happening, so she had given Lily to a pathologist who was going to do a full report for me, again, free of charge, um, and that would take about two weeks. I got the pathology report, and I had found out that Lily had an intestinal parasite called coccidia. Her body was in such poor condition that she wasn't strong enough to fight it and essentially it shut down all her organs. The first thing that I had to do was get Benny's poop tested to see if he had it. I gave that to the vet and it came back negative so thankfully Benny did not have it. If Lily had it from my house she would have gotten it from Benny and Benny does not have it. This means that Lily got sick at the breeder. So I contacted the breeder I told her what happened. I gave her the findings from the report. It took the breeder about a week to respond to my email. And she came back with basically saying that it was not her fault. It did not come from her. It came from me and that it was my fault. Basically, she said, it's not my responsibility. The bunny left my rabbitry. I guarantee that they're healthy. It's not my fault. There's nothing I can do. Sorry for your loss. Too bad. With the information that I have collected on this parasite, I'm extremely confident saying that it did not come from my home. Lily did not have contact with any other animal besides Benny. 
and they were they had very brief contact while they were bonding and like I said Benny does not have the parasite so it did not come from him the pathology report also showed that Lily was in very poor condition she had um, issues with every organ in her body essentially she had gallbladder problems kidney problems bladder problems she was just a very sick little girl and <clears throat> I only had her for two weeks, and in the time that I had her, she was very well taken care of. She got the same amount of care that Benny gets, and he is in exceptional health. I want to make it clear that I do not blame my vet for this. I don't believe that there was anything she could have done to save Lily. Um, it's very hard to spot coccidia, and she was so far gone that there was really nothing she could do. I don't hold my vet to blame for anything. My vet has been exceptional and I would recommend her to anyone. I will leave her information down below. She has been incredible throughout this whole thing. Her entire staff has been so supportive of me and my family and of Benny. <clears throat> she was able to get me Lily's remains after the pathology was done. Um, she was sent to a pet cemetery where she was cremated and given to me in a beautiful little box with her name carved on it. I've become a little bit of an overbearing mother with Penny. I've taken him to the vet a couple times now because I'm so paranoid about every little thing he does because I've essentially been traumatized by this. Um, but he is doing very well. After her passing, he did go through mourning her and stress, which did result in minor GI stasis. Because I know Benny so well and I know his habits so well, I was able to spot it quickly and I took him into the vet and he was treated and he is in perfect condition now and he's happy and healthy. This whole experience has been awful, but I have learned a lot. I don't think that coccidia is something that people are aware of enough. I think that more people should be aware of this, of this parasite, especially if you're bringing a baby home from a breeder. Um, the top things that I can suggest are to take your bunny for an initial checkup as soon as you bring it home. And that checkup should include having their stool sample tested. This parasite can show up in those results and I wish that I had known that and thought to have Lily's stool tested. Unfortunately, I think by the time I got her, she was too sick. And I don't think that had I been able to um, find the coccidia, I don't think that she could have been saved, unfortunately. I think she was just all around a very sick bunny. I would also suggest investing in a small scale for your house to keep track of their weight. Between the time of Lily's initial checkup and a week later when she passed, she had lost a whole pound of her body weight, which was significant. She was only two and a half pounds when I got her. So to lose a pound in a week was a big deal. And I weigh Benny every week, every couple weeks, just to keep track to make sure everything is going okay for him. There's always the important things to watch with bunnies. Their intake of food and water and how much they poop is a big tell for them being ill. Having the poop tested and watching their weight is something that I would suggest to anyone and everyone. It can really save the life of your pet. It's worth it. Make the investment. It was $35 to have a stool sample tested. The scale was $7. So for under $50 to save a pet's life, I would recommend it to anyone. As hard as this experience was, and considering how much money it cost me, and how heartbreaking it was to lose Lily, I wouldn't have traded it to not have her. I only had her two weeks, and she made a huge impression in our lives. She was the sweetest little girl, and Benny loved her, I loved her, my parents loved her. And I wouldn't have treated my time with her for anything. He was so special, and I'm so thankful for the time I got to spend with her. I really hope that some people can learn from my experience and take my suggestions. And if I can help anyone avoid this kind of pain, then I will be satisfied. So thank you for listening to Lily's story. I hope you get something out of it. I'll see you next time. Bye.